So Bernie Sanders' delegates at the Democratic National Committee tried to eliminate superdelegates. Now, they failed, but they won some big concessions. So the Intercept reports here, as part of a proposal which passed the committee 158 to 6, the commission will be charged to make specific recommendations providing that members of Congress, governors, and distinguished party leaders remain unpledged and free to support their nominee of choice, but that remaining unpledged delegates be required to cast their vote at the convention for candidates in proportion to the vote received for each candidate in their state. So the Washington Post reports that this would effectively bind two-thirds of superdelegates to voting as their state's vote in the presidential nominating process. So this is actually a big victory. Now, complete and utter victory would have been no more superdelegates, because superdelegates are by their very nature undemocratic. But it was the case that 15% of the delegates were superdelegates. Now it's the case that... We've cut that, uh, they say again, this would effectively bind two-thirds of superdelegates to voting as their states vote in the presidential nominating process. So we cut the number of superdelegates by two-thirds. That's good. Now also, I think this is, I mean, this really just shows a lot about Bernie Sanders' campaign, is that, for those of you who don't know, at the end, Bernie's only hope was the superdelegates. His only chance, his only hope of actually getting the nomination was, well, I am going to use the superdelegates and I will try to undemocratically overthrow the will of the people. Now, I get it, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of fuckery behind the scenes going on and, you know, they made it so that, and the DNC basically did their best to rig it against Bernie Sanders. They had an anti-Bernie Sanders bias, and we've spoken about that endlessly. And so many states did not have open primaries. When you had open primaries, then independents could vote. And when you had st states like that, Bernie was way more likely to win. So there's a million and one ways we could talk about this. But bottom line is, today, Hillary has millions more votes. She ended up winning. And Bernie's only hope going into the convention was, okay, I'm going to use the superdelegates and try to flip them. Well, now Bernie's, Bernie's people are out there and they're trying to eliminate superdelegates. And they're trying to eliminate superdelegates because it's not about Bernie and it's not about this one election cycle. It's about the principle of the thing. And in the mind of the Bernie people, they say, okay, uh, this is undemocratic and it's better for the country if we eliminate it so we don't ever have to worry again about, oh my goodness, in this election or that election... It's close within superdelegate range, and maybe there's one time when the insurgent candidate has the lead, uh, and the only way the establishment candidate beats the insurgent candidate is to flip the establishment superdelegates. And in that situation, you think the superdelegates would flip? You bet your fucking ass they would. You bet your ass they would. Of course they would flip to support the establishment candidate. So, they're thinking ahead, and they're going, on, as a matter of principle, we shouldn't have these superdelegates. But of course, the Hillary people blocked it, blocked the full change, but we did get two-thirds of them are now eliminated. Guys, that's massively, massively positive. So we should take a minute to thank Bernie Sanders and his people for doing what they did here. This is Bernie's effect on the entire campaign, man. I mean, for example, Hillary Clinton wouldn't have come out for a $15 minimum wage if it wasn't for Bernie Sanders pushing her there. Hillary Clinton recently adopted about half of Bernie Sanders' education plan. Again, she wouldn't have done that if she didn't feel, oh my god, I have massive pressure from Bernie Sanders' people. Now, we may not believe her on those things, but it, it, we can't be idiots who say it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. So in other words, if Hillary didn't adopt the $15 minimum wage and she didn't adopt part of Bernie Sanders' health care plan, we would say, no, oh, what the fuck? Why are you not adopting the plan? What the fuck? But then if she does it, we can't be like, oh, what the fuck? You adopted the plan. Uh, what the fuck? No, it's one or the other. You gotta pick one. But I get it. You say you don't believe Hillary Clinton to a large extent. I don't believe Hillary Clinton with most of the shit that's going on here. But at least she's on the record. And at least if she goes back on certain things like the $15 minimum wage, if she goes back on certain things like portions of the health care plan, or I'm sorry, the, the education plan, if she goes back on certain things, and by the way, it was healthcare too. She went from a vague add-on to Obamacare to, okay, okay, public option, public option. But if she goes back on these things, 
which is probably likely. But if she does, okay, well, we had you on the record. We know you're a fucking liar. Don't you ever dare come to us again and say, well, what do you mean? Uh, vote for me. I'm so great. But well, then why did you go back on this, 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 and this? And we could already do that with a million other policies, but this just gives us more ammunition. And it, again, it just further puts her on the record. So Bernie Sanders' effect on this campaign has been, even if just in rhetoric in some instances, pushing the Democratic Party to the left. And here we have an instance where it's not just the rhetoric. It's not just, hey, rhetorically, the Democratic Party is moving more to the left. Here we have a concrete, solid policy change. And we have nobody to thank for this except Bernie Sanders and his people. So thank you. And we need to take it from here and build on this.